Hello, my name is Remy, and today we're going to be ranking the Korn album's worst to best. Now, I know it's been a while since I've released my last video, which was the Pink Floyd album ranking. It was over a year ago, but better late than never, right? I'll try to do more of these rankings more consistently, so if you have any band or artist you want me to cover, let me know. Korn is easily the best new metal band out there, and a band I originally actually didn't like, but grew to love due to their encapsulating dark sound. With that said, this is just just my opinion, not a factual ranking, so you can let me know your ranking down in the comments below. And now uh, let's get into it. So at number 14 is the 2010 Corn 3. Um, <laughs> this is uh. Korn's worst album, easily. This is Korn forcing themselves to go back to their old sound and failing miserably. Terrible production, awful guitar tones, bass and drums suck, and the vocals writing bad, really bad. No strong qualities to this one, it's super forced. I can't stand it, honestly. Honestly, I, I couldn't even pick out any favorite tracks in this one. The only song that is somewhat decent on here is Allodale, and even that song is super average, so yeah. And at number 13, we have 2011's The Path of Totality. I don't like this album still, but, 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 Corn 3 actually made me appreciate this so much more. It's really bad, it, and it's aged like ass with the dubstep elements, but at least it's something different and honestly kind of fun. Ironically, it's funny. It, it, it's honestly kind of funny. It is, it's not such a boring and dreadful slog as the album before, which was Corn 3. Don't get me wrong, it's not good by any means, but I don't hate it as much as Corn 3. It's it's a failed experiment, but at least it's an experiment, you know? The tracks Get Up and Narcissistic Cannibal are actually bangers. Uh, so at least there is something here, even though every other track is terribly produced and performed with dubstep combining new metal that just doesn't work together at all. Not to mention dubstep is just a shit genre on its own. Uh, it's not the worst scoring album though, as many people would say it is. So at least I can give it some credit, even though I think it's really bad. And at number 12, we have an album that didn't experiment or take a risk. Uh, take a look in the mirror from 2003. Uh, yeah, this isn't good. It's not as unlistenable as I originally thought, but it's really weak. A generic, terribly mixed, lazily written and performed version of Untouchables with the bass being so loud that my ears hurt from it. Not that it does make the album very raw, but unlike their other stuff, this one isn't raw in a good way. I'm not saying there are zero good songs on here because that's not true. Right Now is easily an A tier corn song. I love that one. It's a banger. And the I Wanna Single is fun and kinda bangs too. But everything else I don't care for. The tracks range from terrible to mediocre to somewhat decent occasionally. Overly, it's easily one of their worst. Even though it isn't the worst thing ever, it's still a terrible follow up to Untouchables and Issues, honestly. At number 11, we have Untitled, aka Corn 2. <laughs> Um, this is the Korn album I forget that exists the most. And it's unfortunate because the sound is unique and experimental, being more industrial metal than new metal. Uh, the shame is that after track 6, the album takes such a hit that it completely ruins the whole thing. If the first 6 tracks were an EP, I would have honestly loved it kinda. But every single song after that is not good. Overly, though, I don't hate it, but I think it's kind of forgettable. Favorite tracks would have to be Bitch, We Got a Problem, Kiss, Hold On, and Evolution. And at number 10, we have Life is Peachy from uh, 96, I'm pretty sure. Now we're getting into the territory of albums. I have more positive feelings towards the negative. Uh, Life is Peachy is not a bad album. It's not a bad album, but it almost kind of sounds like a comedy album. They're clearly high on meth on here and just having fun. It is to make sure results though. Some of their most raw cuts are on here, but you also have songs like the K word song, which I'm not gonna say, which is probably the worst corn song ever, while a good god also, which is easily one of their best. Also, Twist is absolutely legendary. But the project does feel very rushed, and it actually was rushed. Corn themselves have said it was rushed. There are some flops on here, but you know, also quite a few bangers. But after the legendary self-titled record, they only released this uh, 
to be honest, to just tour new music. They even tell that, that they just released this to tour new music and they didn't put a lot of effort into it. What saves it for me, though, is the fact that even though it's low effort and rushed, it's still that old raw fun corn sound, which saves it from being bad. It's an okay corn album. It's more fun and less serious than the last one. And my favorite tracks are Good God, Twist, Adidas, Chi, and Mr. Rogers. At number 9 we have the 2005 See One The Other Side. Don't get me wrong, it's not their best record and you can feel the fact that Head isn't in the band anymore. A lot of the instrumentals are lacking on here, especially in the second half, but I like how they tried something different with this, you know, especially after the samey and generic Take A Look In The Mirror, which outside of a few, few songs sucked. Um, already spoke about that one but for this one they hired pop writers and you can really tell it's had parts almost even but rocky but that's not necessarily a bad thing here i'd even argue the first four tracks are all really enjoyable especially souvenir that one is awesome there are a few awful cuts on here and the second half is really weak but the highlights make up for it overly i think it's a decent album i like that they try something new even if it doesn't result in a great album but i think if they trimmed the long track list they could have been a lot better my favorite songs are coming undone tearjerker souvenir and hypocrites and at number eight we have the 98 follow the leader now, now, <laughs> now, 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 a lot of people would put this way higher in their corn ranking list, but I feel like it's nowhere near corn's best album, honestly. It is corn's most experimental, weird, out there, and twisted album, which at times plays to its benefit and results in amazing highlights, which some of those songs are easily highlights of corn's career, but at times it all completely backfires and results in some of their worst songs ever i think you know which ones i'm talking about it's so up and down you know fantastic and awful at the same time but i do overly feel more positive than negative towards it because i can just skip the bad songs and there's a good amount of good tracks on here up until track seven there were no bad songs though this album really took a turn right when all in the family with fred durst started and it kind of went completely downhill after that especially with songs like camel Tosis. Is that even a thing? Or Eureka My Eye, which is a bonus track, which is just, oh my god, it's so bad. However, it's definitely a legendary corn album with legendary artwork, and it's probably the most recognizable in their catalog. Just wish they trimmed it down and that it wasn't so long, you know, it's an hour and seven minutes. I still think it's solid, but not one of their best records. Definitely not. For my favorite tracks, I would go with It's On, Freak On A Leash, Got To Life, Dead Bodies Everywhere, Seed, and BBK. Number seven, we have Requiem from this year. Um, Next up is surprisingly Requiem. Yes, the new album, Above Follow The Leader. I know, I know. I know I'll get a lot of flack for this one, but let me explain. This just was a pleasant surprise to me, like I was kind of indifferent towards the album at the start, but the more I listen to it, the more I enjoy it. Just as a simple alternative metal album, that's done well. It's just done extremely well. It's surprisingly for Korn, kind of a pleasant album to listen to actually, so it's brighter, more casual, and less emotionally heavy, and that makes it stand out from other Korn releases, even though it does sound generic, which is definitely its biggest flaw. The songs and instrumentals are strong though, you know? JD's hook game is fantastic, the riffs are great, the mixing is meaty. I'll take a track like Disconnect, which is like a combination between Korn and Deftones, and almost has some melodic metalcore elements to it. It's uh, by far, like, the best song on this album, and actually one of my favorite songs from Korn ever. It's just so gorgeous, I can't get over how beautiful it is. A good amount of replayable, enjoyable bangers on here. Even though there are a few tracks that are just decent or kind of mid, the fact that it's this short saves it from being bloated. And I can accept the fact that it isn't the most unique thing in the world, and I can just enjoy it. For Korn, it's unique generally, it's not. But the music slaps, and some people just can't enjoy themselves for a second, it seems like, because everybody is shitting on this album, as far as I know. 
one of their better records, and it definitely continues the revived Korn era with every album since the Paradigm Shift being at least a 7 out of 10 for me. They made a huge comeback after the atrocious Korn 3 and TPOT. They came back stronger than ever, and they still keep it going with this one, almost 10 years later. People are failing to accept that new metal and alt metal are making a comeback in 2022, but I like it because those genres are great, especially alt metal. I'm a huge alt metal fan. It's probably my favorite genre. And they got a bad reputation because of bands like Limp Bizkit being hot garbage, completely ruining it. And I'm so glad Korn is still releasing bangers this far into their career and trying something new. Amazing band, good record. I enjoyed it. Favorite tracks, um, Disconnect, Start to Healing, and... Uh, I would go with also Worst to Tonus Wear. At number six, it's The Nothing from 2019. I actually think this has easily one of their better albums. A major return to form and a continuation of the modern corn W albums. <laughs> this album does lose focus in the second half with a few tracks. There's like three tracks I'm not really crazy about. But other than that, it's really fucking good. Especially the first half. Jonathan was going through some very tough times recording this album. And you can tell this album is heavy. But then you have songs like This Loss, which are just absolutely beautiful and adds so much flavor to the record. It's a rock-solid modern corn album. I really like it. Favorite tracks would be Cold, This Loss, Idiosyncrasy, The Darkness is Revealing, and Can You Hear Me? At number five is 2016's The Serenity of Suffering. And uh, as much as I wasn't crazy about this album at first, I have to say that now I think it's a great follow-up to the paradigm shift. It's really solid and overly easily one of their best records they have ever released. The first five songs are all gnarly, gnarly bangers with infectious melodic hooks and great guitar riffs. The second half is actually pretty good as well, outside of like everything falls apart. I am pretty much okay with every single song. Other than that, there's no song like Rotting in Vain in the second half, though. That song is easily one of my favorites ever from Korn. Overly, I'm very happy with this now. It's so refreshing hearing this band come back, making good music again. After such a disappointing run they had with albums like Take a Look in Mirror, Untitled, Korn 3, and TPLT. This, this one is just super heavy. It's super heavy. It's probably one of the heaviest, and I love it. Favorite tracks, Rotting in Vain, The Hating, Black is the Soul, Insane, and Die at Another Night. Number four is the 2002's Untouchables. Easily one of my favorite corn albums. You can tell there has been a lot of effort put into this one. The highlights are fantastic with crunchy riffs, amazing writing, and vocals from JD. Fantastic production as well. This album's only flaw really is that it's a little, it's a little bloated. There are a few songs like Beat It Up Right that did not have to be on the track list at all whatsoever but still despite being a little long i love how it's just banger after banger after banger after banger it reminds me of issues combined with self-titled which has that self-titled rawness and that maturity and experimentation of issues matches together perfectly um here to stay thoughtless blame wake up hate embrace alone i break one more time and bottle up inside are all s tier corn songs s tier that's a lot of bangers to have on an album and a lot of the other songs are really solid too this one follows up issues greatly honestly it's not issues level for me but it's still one of the best records and definitely a prime time corn record for me that ended an era and at number three we have the 1994's corn's debut album corn self-titled so that is a legendary corn album <laughs> The one that started the whole new metal wave with the first lyrics being, Are you ready? Kicking into the legendary track, Blind. Not knowing the sound will shake up the whole entire fucking earth with extremely dark sounds and lyrics. And at the time, it was very unusual for a metal singer, a metal band, to be speaking on stuff such as abuse, bullying, depression, and agony. JD really poured his whole heart into this one. It was such a game changer at the time and still is to this day age crate favorite tracks are definitely daddy which is one of the most depressing songs i've ever heard but it's fucking incredible also blind is magnificent clown lies shoots and ladders divine f-a-g-e-t and predictable all fantastic at a number two my most controversial pick on this list that a lot of people won't expect but listen 2013's Paradigm Shift. I know, I know, I know. 
But look, after the abominations of Corn 3 and TPOT, the band was really transforming into something bad, and I was kind of losing interest completely. So following those abominations, I was not expecting anything good from this, but to my surprise, it turned out to be, well, absolutely fantastic with head as a guitarist back the vibe on here is really similar to issues and i love that the riffs slap they're thick and catchy and nasty the hooks are great the writing is good and it's really short and not bloated it's so dynamic the electronic influences and synths are tastefully applied here and they fit perfectly unlike on the path of totality it they just fit so well into those guitars and make it's so much better and more unique it's a nice ear refresher that remind me that corn is still a band capable of making great music because at one time i thought they were really done after head left the band well now he's back and he saved the band and honestly coming back to this the songs keep getting stuck in my head and i keep liking them more and more and more it's almost perfect for me and i will never understand the hate this album gets it's so unique and different and just because it isn't classic corn people shit on it but i absolutely love it every second of it honestly and this album really like revived the band and put them on a streak of great album after great album so very important album even though a lot of people don't realize that as far as my favorite tracks go a love in meth it's one of the best corn songs i've ever heard spike in my veins pray for me paranoid and arrest punishment time victimized pretty much every song on here honestly mass hysteria what we do yeah every song and at number one, we have 9099's Issues. Easily Korn's best album. Extremely consistent all the way through. And fantastic production, incredible hooks and vocal performances. Fantastic. One of the greatest new metal slash old metal albums that really made me somewhat like Korn in the first place. If it wasn't for this album, I would have not checked out Korn's full discog. But every song in here is mind-blowing, honestly. It's just absolutely incredible. I have literally nothing bad to say about this. Not one thing. I love it all the way through. Every single song. It's so different and experimental. And at this point, Korn have reached a level of maturity in their music. And starting taking themselves more seriously. Especially after albums like Life is Peachy. And it worked out perfectly. I can't even say my favorite tracks. Because I would have to name the whole track list. But Falling Away From Me... I think that is the best corn song ever. Back for me, Dirty, Trash, and Somebody, Someone. That'll be my top five. I'll, I think all those songs are like 11 out of 10. <laughs> 11 out of 10, literally. So yeah, that's about it for my car and discography ranking. Um, Let me know how you felt about it and write your own ranking in the comments. Uh, and until then, see y'all and stay safe.